I wonder if Mike Shannon's going to be able to talk to Silent George if the Cardinals win tonight. This is our final skit of the evening by our group of Craig Hawksley, Bert Borth, <laughs> and Dean Menderman, and Rodney Washington. <laughs> well, we're down here in the St. Louis Cardinale locker room after the seventh game of the series, and I tell you, it's pandemonium out here in this locker room. All the baseball players are out there right now. They're taking a shower with champagne, but I'm just going to wait and have a bubble bath with Budweiser just a little bit later on. So, if you want to gain a better perspective of life and know more about the game of baseball, why don't you pick yourself up a handy 48-pack on your way home tonight? <laughs> so, the players are having a super time out here this afternoon. They're running around with no clothes on, pouring champagne all over each other. And I've interviewed just about all of them, but I got one final man that I'm going to interview now. This is a gentleman standing over on the side over here, a man who played an integral part in the 1982 Cardinelli surge to the world championship. I'm talking about a man who played flawlessly in the field and at bat, and a man who has never granted an interview in his entire tenure with the St. Louis Cardinals. So, for the first time, a real hearty welcome for silent George Hendrick. <laughs> well, this certainly is an honor. I'd like to welcome you up here, Silencio, for coming up to give a little, little bit of an interview with us. And I know that the... <laughs> I know that the millions and millions of Cardinal Rooters all around there are watching in right now and glad to see that you're going to finally break the ice with an interview. And the first question I think I'd like to ask you is, how come you're granting this interview for a person who works in the radio and television media and have thus far avoided all sports writers' quests for your truth? Well, Mike, the main reason I've been talking to these people... <laughs> You know, um, you know, I don't mind talking to you because you played the game before, you know, but, uh, you know, these sports writers, you know, you tell them one thing, they print something else, you know, so that's why I haven't been talking to them much lately. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's a good answer, Mr. Hendrick, but can you, can you give us any specific examples of the kind of untruths that the St. Louis sports media continually prints. Yeah, Mike, uh, I guess the main thing is, uh, if you notice when I'm out there in the field, you see me out there, Ozzy, Lonnie, Willie McGee, there's brothers running all over the field out there. <laughs> and for the life of me, I can't figure out what the sports writers keep calling it Whitey Ball. <laughs> 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 well, you're breaking out swinging hard here, George, talking to us for the first time. I think another question I'd like to ask you is, in this championship season, you face some of the cream of the crop as far as National League hurlers are concerned. You face lefty Steve Carlton. You did battle with Fernando Valenzuela. And, of course... <laughs> Sorry, George. And, of course... You face the Negro brothers, Phil and Don. No, wait a minute, that's the Everly brothers, isn't it? <laughs> Phil and Joe is what I'm talking about. But of all of the fine, fine National League hurlers that you faced this season, who would you say has been the toughest for you? Well, yeah, all those guys have been tough, the ones you, you, you've been talking about. But I, I got to say the toughest... Picture I'm going up against this year has got to be Hub Kittle. <laughs> you, you mean the little old Hubberino from the pitching staff there? Well, how come? Well, you know, uh, he's different, you know, because like uh, Carlton, he'll finesse you, right? He'll move that ball around that strike zone there, you know. Valenzuela, he just smoke it right past you. But Hub, he'll aim for your head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that sucker's mean up there, I'm telling you. It's hard to hit that ball when you're dodging it. Well, George, so far in your life, you've had a very fine, fulfilling baseball career. 
And I would say that you probably got about three, four, five good years left, didn't you? Maybe somewhere in the American League later in your career as a DH. <laughs> but the thing I'd like to ask you right now is, when you, what are you finally going to do, like any retirement plans, after you finally do step down from this grand old after double day invention? What? Baseball, George. <laughs> to do, you know, is after I retire is probably move on up to the booth, you know, and do some announcing, you know. Because I figure, man, if you can do it, anybody can, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think if you slam down enough of these, anybody can, you know, the way that goes, Judge. But anyway, I'd like to thank you very much for finally breaking your silence and being a guest here on my dugout program after a very fine world championship season. I'm glad you let me come out here. I like talking to these people. It's fun. I don't know why I've been quiet all this time. This Neither is good, I. you know. Neither do I, George. Well, we have to do this more. We certainly will. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe on behalf of the 1982 World Championship Cardinals team, on behalf of these Cardinals and Anheuser, but George, let me finish this, okay. will you? I'd like to thank all of you people for tuning in once again. The world, let me finish this, George, will you? The world championship, St. Louis Cardinals. So, thanks for your time this time. Till next time, so long, everybody. That's it, George. Wrap it up. We're done. <laughs>